Hey there, Scott here. Your video is going to start in just one moment. I just wanted to say thank you for stopping by my channel. The video that you're about to see is part of a series of videos. All of these videos are educational. They're teaching you a strategy or they're teaching you about a new tool or they're walking you through a campaign or somebody's delivering insight. All of the people that teach over in these videos, some of them are me, but a lot of them are other individuals who are subject matter experts in their field. I hope that these videos will be useful. There's a variety of sales videos, marketing marketing videos, videos that highlight and discuss different tools and technology, as well as videos that discuss high level as well as granular strategy. These are meant for individuals that are looking to level up in their own career, or if you're going down an entrepreneurial road and you want to understand how to build a business from the ground up, a lot of these videos can help you as well. If you enjoyed the video and you watched the whole thing, if you got some value from it, which I really hope you do, uh, please like, obviously hit that subscribe button. It means a lot. But also I want you to check out two other free resources. They're there's a newsletter, a bi-weekly newsletter called ROI Overload that basically highlights the best, the latest, the greatest, the tools, strategy, insights, articles, case studies for sales, marketing, entrepreneurship. And if newsletters aren't your thing, then you can also check out the ROI Overload Medium publication. Again, it's a free resource that allows you to read case studies, learn from people that have done it before. A wide range of authors contribute to the ROI Overload Medium publication. Again, link is in the description of this video. I hope you enjoy all these resources. I hope you get some benefit out of them. That's all I got. Here's your video. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at the live section of youtube.com and this is where individuals are live streaming their content direct to YouTube. And while in many cases what's being streamed is going to be news, gaming, sports, and events, other individuals are using this medium in order to stream their content live to followers, clients, and customers. So in this course, we will go inside of the Creator Studio and we'll look at how you can use this medium to stream your content. Now, while there are a number of options available, we will focus on the minimum number of pieces that you'll need in order to get started. We'll also look at a third party application that you can use in order to make things easier. So with that, thanks, and I'll see you in the first video. Now, there is a minimum level of equipment necessary if you're going to live stream on YouTube. And you'll want to be able to create audio into YouTube Live without noise. And so typically what you'll want to do is to get some kind of noise canceling headset. You're looking at one with stereo jacks, which would fit into a personal computer with both headphones and a mic jack. Now it's possible that you will only have a USB drive and if that's the case what you can do is you can use a USB headset or mic. If your personal computer has nothing but a USB drive but you also have a headset with stereo jacks you can use an adapter where the stereo jacks will fit into the adapter and then the adapter will plug into your USB. Now if for some reason you're going to be looking to record yourself then you are going to need some kind of webcam if you don't have a webcam inside of your personal computer. Now you're looking right now at the Logitech C930E and the reason that this can work extremely well in your setup when you are streaming live is because the resources to run the camera are actually within the camera. They don't run on your personal computer and that will keep you from some latency issues. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to discuss some things that will make live streaming easier, and they would fall into category of things that are nice to have. It wouldn't be mandatory. First, you're looking at a full HD monitor that fits into your VGA port. You can do this as a single monitor, or you can get two. Both will help you to be able to manage everything that you're doing in terms of your presentation while you're live streaming. If you need to live stream and you want to use something that's going to be portable, there are HD monitors available that will fit into your USB port that you can use as a portable system with your laptop. In some cases, when you are trying to use your VGA system and you want to plug it into your personal computer, in recent years, laptops no longer have the VGA port. So you're going to need some kind of adapter that will allow you to take your VGA and plug it into your USB port. Now, if you have those basics, it's going to be a lot easier to live stream from your desktop. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about a few things that will make it easy 
for you to live stream with your mobile device. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, there are a few items that if you're going to be live streaming primarily with your mobile that are going to be helpful to you. Now, you're looking right now at a selfie stick and tripod stand. The reason that this is important is because you want to make sure that you have the kind of hardware that will allow you to attach your mobile device to your conventional tripod, mainly because you may be in situations where you need a full-size tripod. And so you'll want to have that tripod holder to fit onto it. And so if you have the tripod holder, you'll be able to use it on a full-size tripod. And this will give you some versatility in terms of where you want your camera to rest while you're recording. You'll also want to make sure that you have some kind of connection to the Ethernet where you can be hardwired. Typically, this is going to take some kind of adapter, and you'll want to make sure that you get one that will fit your particular mobile device. Lastly, there are going to be some cases where you will need an external microphone. You're looking at one right now where two people can wear a microphone at the same time. So if you need to record an interview that you're doing, one person can wear one lavalier mic, you can wear the other one, and you can actually conduct an interview from your mobile device, and you can live stream it. So this equipment and hardware won't be mandatory for you to have in order to live stream. However, it will make your live stream a lot easier and it will allow you to produce a higher quality video. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you don't have a Google account or YouTube account, you're going to start the process by going to youtube.com. You're going to go to this sign in button. When you get to this screen, if you don't have an account, you're going to click this button that says create account. Now, if you don't have a Google account, again, you're going to create a Google account before you start YouTube. And then once you do that, you're then going to be able to sign in to YouTube. But once you're logged in, you're going to want to come to your profile picture. You're then going to want to click on this settings button. That's going to bring you to this page. And what you can do is you can then decide on a particular brand that you're going to want to operate under. And what you're going to do is you're going to come down to this area and you're going to create a new channel from this link. What you're going to do is you're going to click this button that says create a new channel. You're then going to give your brand a name. Once you do that, you're then going to click create. You'll then be at a point where you can begin to customize the look and feel of your channel. What you're going to want to do is to come back to your profile now. You're then going to want to click your Creator Studio. Now, in order to do most of the features, you're going to need to upload a video. So even if you're not going to use that video, you're probably going to want to upload a video that you have and then turn it to private just so you can begin to customize your channel. So what you're going to do here is you're going to click Upload a Video. You're then going to click this button. You're going to turn the privacy to private. You're then going to click this button and then you're going to upload a video. Once you do that, you're then going to click done and then YouTube will complete the process of uploading your video. You'll then be ready to start the customization process. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Once you have uploaded your video, what you're going to do is you're going to come back to your profile. You're then going to go back to your Creator Studio. And then once you've gone back to your Creator Studio, you're then going to go to this channel area. That's going to open up a new dialog box on the left hand side and you're going to see that you're going to be in the status and features area. Now, once you've uploaded your video, you should be eligible to upload videos. What you want to do then is you want to then click this button to enable live streaming. So you're going to click this button. What's going to happen then is that Google is going to verify your identity through your mobile device. Now you can in some cases have multiple accounts. So just so that you'll be aware, you should be able to go through this account verification process if you have another account associated with your mobile device. What you're also going to want to enable are going to be longer videos. Since your streams will likely be longer than 15 minutes, you want to click this enable button. And again, if you haven't gone through the verification process, Google will take you through that verification process at this point. But there are other features that you are going to want to enable. Custom thumbnails, external annotations, and custom URLs. 
Now, it may take time and a few videos for you to have uploaded. However, as soon as these are going to be eligible to you, you want to make sure that these are going to be enabled because they will help you in promoting your live stream. But once you've enabled everything necessary for live streaming, your area should look something like this. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, YouTube has default settings that you can use so that you can have your video categorized and optimized without having to enter the same data over and over again. And so what you're going to want to do is to go over to these upload defaults. That's going to bring you to this page. Now, if your videos and your live streams are typically going to be ready for public consumption as soon as you record them, you're going to want to leave this default at public. What you can do is you can leave it at unlisted and then come back and change it once the video has been optimized. If you have a typical category that your videos are going to be in, you can select that category. Typically, you're going to use the standard YouTube license. There are other options available to you. Now again, you want to stick with these default settings unless there's a reason not to. And if your video is going to have a common title, for example, if you're doing a vlog and typically you're going to have an episode of a particular show, you can write that title in. If you're going to write in a standard description or you're always going to have a URL at the beginning of your description, you can write part of that description so that every time your video uploads, this minimum setting is going to come up. You can write in a standard set of tags. And then YouTube is going to leave some default settings checked for you. And you can either leave these checked or you can uncheck them if you don't want that as part of your default. If you want to certify through your captions, you can do that at this area. And if you're going to allow video improvement suggestions, you can, you can enable that here. Once you save these defaults, every time you go live, this minimal information is going to come up as well as the fact that these are going to be the settings that you're going to be working with unless you change them. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, you're also going to want to customize your branding. So we're going to click this link in your left side menu under the channel category. Once we do that, we're going to come to this page. Now, what YouTube will allow you to do is to add a watermark to any of your videos, typically you can add in a logo that will be translucent. So what you want to do is click add a watermark and YouTube suggests that you add a transparency in just one color. The recommended file format is going to be PNG or GIF. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a file and then we're going to upload it to this area. Once you have your photo in, you're then going to click save. And then your watermark will then be uploaded. If you want to upload a different file, you can click this link. Otherwise, you're going to click Save. You can choose in the video when you want the brand to appear. You can choose a custom start time. You can choose the end of the video, or you can make it appear for the entire video. Once you've selected, you can then click Update. Now, all of your videos and your live stream recordings will have your logo on them. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, before you go into the next stage, you're going to want to make sure that you phone verified your account. You're also going to want to make sure that you are enabled for external annotations. Now, those things are in place. You can then go to the advanced link. What you're now going to do is to have your account verified with a particular website. This is going to be the website that you're going to be able to use in order to create external links. So you're going to want to make sure that you have a website that is not going to be associated with any other YouTube account, and then you're going to click Add. Once you have that site in, you're then going to click Add. You're then going to want to go through a verification process. You're then going to click Verify. Now the recommended verification is for you to upload a file to your site and then to allow Google to verify your site based on that file upload. So what you're first going to do is you're going to download the HTML file. You're then going to want to upload your Google downloaded file to your root directory. You want to test and make sure that your file is uploaded by clicking this link. You should then see your file on the web. You'll then click the verify button and then your site will be verified. Once you come back to this page, 
Your site should then be verified and ready to be used with your YouTube account. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, we looked at the upload defaults. There were three settings that we need to discuss a little further, especially as you get ready to start going live on your channel. So do that, we're gonna go to this area. And before we go to the live area, we're gonna click upload video. Now there are three choices that you can make when you're going to upload. You can go public, you can go unlisted, you can go private, you can go scheduled. Now obviously when you're going live, you're not necessarily gonna go scheduled. Now when you make your video public, that means then that people are gonna be able to watch you live, they're gonna be able to watch your recording on demand as soon as it's completed processing. So again, so if you want people to see your video, you want the widest possible distribution, you're going to want to make this public so they'll be able to get it immediately, including your subscribers. Now the next level is going to be unlisted. Now unlisted videos means that it won't be available to be found in search or in YouTube search, but it will be able to be found by those who have the link. That means then that if you want to have it available to select people, who then will have the ability to share the video and watch the video, then you can make it unlisted. Now your subscribers will get notice of your unlisted videos. So you want to be aware of that. So again, so if you want something that's going to be private, then you don't want to use unlisted. However, if you want to make it available to people immediately, but not everyone and not for everyone to be able to find and search, you're going to use the unlisted level. Typically, if you're going to want to have video specifically for your subscribers, you're going to want to use unlisted. Now, private video means that only those to whom you designate the video should go to will actually get it. For example, you'll notice that this video says private, but it also has a share button. So if we click this share button, then we'll have to enter the email addresses of the individuals that will have access to this video. And typically you wanna make sure that these are going to be Gmail addresses. So this is a truly private video in that only those you designate will be able to see your content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now the easiest way to stream live will be to use your desktop camera and all you'll need to do is make sure that your camera is connected to your personal computer and that your audio is on. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click this link. That's going to bring you this dialog box. You're then going to click go live. Once you click go live, you're going to get another dialog. Now your browser will then ask you if you're going to allow YouTube to take over your camera and your microphone. In this case, you're going to click allow. And once you get to the screen, you're then going to want to write in your title. You're then going to decide on whether or not your video is going to be unlisted or it's going to be private. Now for the sake of this video, we're gonna make this video private. We can click the schedule for later button. And when we click that schedule for later button, we're going to be able to set the time for which we want to go live. You'll notice that there is a more options link and basically you're going to be able to write in the rest of your description. You'll be able to choose your category and you'll be able to choose your webcam and microphone. Once we do that, we can click this link that says advanced settings. We can decide to allow or disallow the chat for our live stream. It's going to be enabled by default. You can also enable some kind of age restriction. And if you have some kind of sponsored or paid promotion, you can indicate that here. Once you've completed these advanced settings, you can click this arrow, and then you can come back to the screen and then you can then click next. Now in going from the previous screen to this one, YouTube is going to create a thumbnail based on what it sees in your camera. Now, if you want to change that thumbnail, all you'll need to do is click this button that says upload custom thumbnail or you can click this link that says retake thumbnail and you can have your image taken by your webcam. In this case, we're going to click upload custom thumbnail. And once we've done that, we can click the go live button if we want to go live right now, or we can click the done button and that'll make sure that we complete the process. 
Now, at the point at which we decide that we want to do the broadcast in the future, we would come back at the appointed time. We would come inside of our go live screen and we would come to this upcoming area and click this link that would bring us to this screen. We would then click our live dashboard and that'll bring us back to this area where we can go live. The one other thing you're going to notice is that on the right hand side you have your chat area. So for the individuals that are watching your live stream, they'll be able to chat with you. You'll be able to write in this area where all messages are going to be visible or you can have your messages sorted where it's determined that individuals that are spamming your message area will not be in here. And that is your easiest way of going live straight from your desktop. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now another way to go live will be that you can go to this profile area. You're then going to click your Creator Studio. Once you've selected your Creator Studio, you're then going to want to go to your live streaming link. Once you click the live streaming link, then you're going to want to click this area that says events. So you're going to notice the live event that we created here before. We're going to create the live event from here because it allows us to do something a little different than just going live from our desktop. What we're going to do is we're going to click this area that says new live event. We're then going to write in our title. We're then going to decide on when we want to go live with our broadcast. We're then going to write in our description and tags. We're going to decide on whether or not we're going to use the unlisted area or private or public. Now in this case, we're going to go ahead and do a private broadcast for the sake of this video only. And you'll notice here that we have a choice. We can decide that we want to use Google Hangouts on air or we can use our camera. Now when we use our camera, it's going to be just like the experience that we had using our desktop. However, in this case, when we use Google Hangouts, we are going to then be able to share our screen. So we're now going to click Create Event. And then our future event is going to be on this page. And in order to come and start the live broadcast, we'll need to come into our Creator Studio. We'll need to come into our live streaming link. We'll need to come to this Events tab. And then we'll need to click Start Hangout on Air. Now before we end this video, we're going to go back and click this edit button. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the advanced settings. So we're going to click this link. And what you're going to notice is that you have some other options. You can decide to enable or disable the live chat. We can decide whether or not we're going to allow this video to be embedded. Now in most cases, if you want to embed your live stream on your website, you're going to keep this allowed. This does allow other people to do the same thing. However, if you want wide distribution of your live stream, you may want to keep this enabled. Now YouTube will do a couple of automated promotions. They will promote this event that you're doing across all of your channels. They'll also promote this event on your channel page when the event is live. So you can enable or disable those functions. So once again, you'll be able to enable or disable your age restriction. And then you can also auto start the event as soon as you are inside of the facility. Now we're going to stop the video right here and we're going to go over the right side settings, the control room and the cards in the next video. Okay. So with that, thanks. And I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back. We are still in the info and settings area in the advanced settings. And many of these settings are going to be the same as you're going to see when we're in post production. However, there are some that are going to be peculiar to the live streaming process. For example, we can decide that regardless of whether the stream was public, we can decide that we're not going to allow it to be found in search by clicking this link. So we'll be making it unlisted as soon as it is completed. We can also choose whether or not the recording will have comments with it. So we are going to have comments during the broadcast. However, we can make it so that the comments will not be allowed after the broadcast. So we can leave this unchecked in order to have that. And that is the default setting. Now, the other thing is we can allow people to go backward 
and watch some of the beginning of the live broadcast while we're still streaming. Or we can disable this function and they will not be able to back up and see the previous portion of our live stream. Now, one of the things you're gonna be able to determine whether or not you want to make sure that most people are gonna be able to watch it. You're going to need to make some decisions about whether or not you want normal latency, low latency, or ultra low latency. Again, you're going to do this based on how much interaction you really need to have in real time. Once you have the settings the way you want them, you'll then click Save Changes. Now we can add in cards in order to place links to our video and playlist, our channel, if we're looking for a particular kind of donation to a nonprofit, or we are taking a poll, we can do any of those things with cards. So you're now going to want to visit your cards area you visit that card area, you can set up a card in various ways. So for example, you can set up a playlist, one of your channel, where you direct people to your channel by clicking a link, a donation, and a poll. Now you're encouraged to use three of these cards or less for the user experience. You can also click into the live control room and most of this will not be relevant until you actually start your stream, as you can see. However, one thing that you'll want to note if you scroll all the way to the bottom is that you'll be able to look at this screen and know what your viewers are seeing and what they're experiencing in the chat. And this will give you control over what their experience is and what it will be. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. What we're now going to do is start the process of a live stream. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into our live streaming link. We're going to go to the events tab. And once we get to the events tab, we're going to look for the live stream that we set up. And we're going to click this button that says start hangout on air. Now you're going to get another message that says that Google wants to use your microphone and your camera. Now this is going to be a separate window from your browser, so you are going to need to click Allow. Now there are going to be several things on this screen that you're going to want to take note of. Now obviously when you enter this area, you have not yet started the broadcast. So one of the first things you'll want to take note of is going to be your Settings button. And this is where you're going to set up your camera, this is where you're going to set up your microphone, and this is where you're going to set up what you are going to be listening to either in your headset or through your personal computer. If you want to make sure that the sound is playing, you'll click this link where you're going to play a test sound. Once you have all of this information in, you are then going to click Save. Now obviously we do not have the camera turned on, but if we did, you'd be seeing a preview of your webcam's view in this box. It's here where you will be able to adjust your bandwidth. Now again, if you're trying to broadcast in as high a quality as possible, you're obviously going to want to tilt the scale toward this end. The default setting is going to be at the very end. You can have it so that your camera is going to be turned off altogether. Now currently, even though all you see is a blank screen, the camera is turned on. And the only reason that you can't see the subject is because there is a cover over the camera. If we turn off the camera in this case, you're going to notice that the icon is going to be there. The camera's turned back on, then the view of the camera will come back on and it will be the preview here. If you want to mute the microphone, you're going to be able to do that from this area. Now what you're going to see in this area is going to be an invitation. And when you click this link, you're not going to be inviting people to watch the call you're actually going to be inviting people to participate with you in your live broadcast inside of your Hangout. So you're going to click this button and you're going to get a link. The link that you share here is going to go to people and then they're going to actually be invited on the panel with you to present during your live broadcast. So you can pass the link by clicking here or, or you can send the link specifically to an individual by using their name and email address in this area. Now at this point, we're going to close this invitation 
we're going to stop the video here and when we come back we're going to work with this left side menu of other controls for your hangout okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video welcome back now in this video we're gonna go over the left side panel and customizing it for your live stream one of the advantages of using Google Hangouts is that you will be able to share your screen but one of the other things you're going to be able to do is to utilize what's called the group chat now this group chat is going to be available with the people that are going to be on the panel with you so for example we invited certain people using this link at the top those people are going to be presenting with us and as they present we're going to be able to have an internal dialogue with them as we present and we're going to use this chat box in order to do it now the other thing we're going to be able to do is share our screen and to start the screen share process we're going to click this green button now when that happens then Google is going to show us all the screens that we have available for us to share with our audience so when we get ready to do that, all we'll need to do is to choose the screen that we're going to be interacting with and we're going to click on it and then we're going to click the share button. You'll notice here that you'll have a way of stopping the process by clicking this button and of course you can end the hangout all together. But basically you want to utilize this area so that if you need to stop sharing your screen and to go on to something else, perhaps back to your camera, you can do that. So you can still remain live and yet stop screen sharing so for example let's click the stop button and what you're going to notice then is that Google goes back to the screen share with your camera and we also have a cameraman button now this cameraman button allows us to control the experience with the individuals that are going to be participating with us on our live stream so for example it says when guests join we can hide their audio and video Again, all that does is give you a measure of control over the live stream. We can choose only to broadcast the live stream. So the audience will not see the images at the bottom. So if we click this button, yes, we want the audience to only see what's going to be on the screen. And when we want to maintain control over when they're going to be able to speak, we can make sure that everyone that joins this broadcast with us, and again, those are going to be the individuals that you invite here, they're going to be muted when they join so this gives you a measure of control we also have what's called the hangout control room and Google tells us one of the things we can do is we can turn someone's volume up or down we can eject someone if they're not behaving properly so we click OK and then our control room gives us access to each person who's participating with us their volume their mic and we can eject them also when we've stopped working with the control panel we can X out of here now because we're going to be live streaming there's one other application that we're going to want to take note of you want to hover over these three buttons you want to click add apps you want to click the hangout toolbox we do that we want to install the extension once we install the hangout toolbox what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to add in a lower third so for example all we need to do is to write in our tagline we can choose our color or we can upload our own overlay or our own lower third by using this custom button. Once we have our overlay looking the way we want, all we'll need to do is to turn this on. And when we turn on this button, our lower third will then be available. We also have available to us other settings. However, the only thing that we're really going to be working with with our Hangout toolbox on our live stream primarily is going to be the lower third. So once we've done our setup, we are then ready to go live with our broadcast. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, once you've decided on what you're going to present, you're then ready to go live. You can click this hide button if you are sharing your screen, and then you can click the start broadcast button. Now, as soon as you click the start broadcast button, you want to be aware that if you've made your live stream public, it's going to be public not only to those with whom you've shared the link, but also on YouTube in general. So what you're going to do then is you're going to click this start broadcast button. YouTube will then remind you that your broadcast will be on YouTube. You can then click OK. 
And once you do that, then you'll see that there will be a startup period. And once the startup period is over, you'll see the stop broadcast button. You'll see the red live button. And that means that you are presenting whatever is on your screen live to those on YouTube. Now, if you have a second monitor, what you can do on the other monitor is that you can go to your live control room. If you go to that live control room, you should be able to see your broadcast. And what you're looking at at this point will be what your audience is actually going to see. So, for example, if you click this button, this is what's being broadcast. Now, you're going to want to make sure that you've turned this volume down, but you'll be able to see what the audience is seeing on a delay, but as you present it. And so this can be on your screen and you can be watching the chat here at the same time and you'll be watching what they're reacting to. Now again, once you've chosen to present your content, what you can do is you can switch screens and all you'll need to do is you'll need to click this screen share button that will give you the access to your panel. You'll be able to click the screen button again and then you'll be able to choose the screen that you're going to present. You can cancel that screen and then you'll go back to your camera. As you can see here, this is our camera available to us. We can turn off our camera and then it will be our Google icon. If we want to pass the link to someone while we're actually presenting, all we'll need to do is to click this links button. We can take this YouTube page and then we can share this link with other individuals, perhaps on social media or elsewhere. And once you complete it, what you're going to present, you can then click this leave call button and that will actually stop the hangout and that will stop the transmission. So what we're going to do first is we're going to stop the broadcast. That means that we're no longer presenting live. And now what we can do is we can click this hangout button that will close the window for Google Hangouts. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one of the alternatives when you are presenting on your live stream, and especially when you are sharing your screen, is going to be that you're going to be able to use Google Slides. Now, in order to make this easier, you may want to use Google Slides in another browser. So, for example, if you have a second type of browser installed on your personal computer, you can use it, or you may want to use another instance. But basically, you're going to use Google Slides. And what you're going to do is you're going to open up your presentation in Google Slides. And what you're going to do is you're going to present on the main screen from your slides. Now, before you start your presentation, what you're going to open is this bar for the Q&A. That's going to give you access to the audience tools and the speaker notes inside of Google Slides. What you're then going to do is you're going to click Start New. You will then be able to allow your audience to participate with you from this URL. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to copy this URL. You need to give it to those individuals that are going to be part of your audience. And then what you'll be able to do is to make their questions live on the broadcast. Now, if you choose to use the Q&A feature, of Google Slides, this is the screen that they'll be using instead of the chat inside of YouTube. And for example, if they ask a question, they can write their question in to you and they'll click submit. Now what you will have on your second monitor are your audience tools and your speaker notes and you'll get the question from the individuals on your call. Now what makes this unique is that you'll be able to present that question to everyone as you answer it. So what you would do is you would click this present button. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move the audience tools to another monitor, which is where you would have it anyway if you were going to be using this feature of Google Slides. And basically you'll see that this would be the screen that we would be presenting and this would be the question that people are asking. So again, this is an alternative to being able to present questions and answers to your audience while you present on your YouTube live screen. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, for the most part throughout this course, we've not mentioned many third-party applications. This is one that you may want to consider especially if you are a user of Facebook Live and YouTube Live. The dilemma for some 
live streamers is that they want to do both at the same time. Restream.io will allow you to stream to both Facebook Live and YouTube at the same time by using their application. Now there is a free trial, but in order to use Facebook Live and YouTube Live at the same time, you will need the paid version. So once you set up Restream, what you're going to do first is you're going to add in your channel. And you'll obviously start with YouTube Events. You'll click Connect YouTube Events. You can also add in your YouTube live stream. And then you are then ready to begin working with your channels. Now if you want to begin adding in another channel, what you'll need to do is you'll need to add in your Facebook live channel. You'll notice then that you're going to need to have the paid version. Now in order to do this, you will need to have a custom RTMP. And you can select the plan that you like. The most inexpensive one at the recording of this video is going to be $19 per month. But once you have the upgrade, what you'll be able to do is to go back to Restream. You'll then add your channel. You'll then add in Facebook Live. You'll then connect to your Facebook account. You'll then complete the connection. You can then decide on whether or not you're going to allow them to post to your timeline. You can then click OK. You can then choose to allow Restream to manage your pages. And typically, since you're going to be working with business pages, you are going to choose this. However, you can choose which you are going to allow. Once you've made your choices, you can then click OK. But once you have your channel set up inside of Restream, you are going to need to have some kind of software in order to do this. Now there's free software available and it's called OBS Studio. You can download OBS Studio in order to broadcast to both YouTube and Facebook at the same time through Restream. And basically what you'll be using are two pieces of information. You'll be using this RTMP stream as well as your stream key and placing it inside of your OBS system so that you can simultaneously broadcast to Restream, which will then broadcast to YouTube as well as Facebook at the same time. And all you'll need to do is to download the software for your appropriate system. And when you're setting up OBS, what you'll need to do is you'll need to use your Restream.io as your service. They're then going to ask you for your stream key. You're going to get that information from Restream and when you click in here, it's actually going to reveal the real letters and real numbers. So you'll just want to click in there. You won't have to worry about the encryption signals here. And you're going to put that stream key in this area and then you're going to click next. And once your stream is set up inside of OBS, you can then begin streaming live to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you have YouTube installed on your mobile device, whether it's an iPhone or an Android, you can go live on that device also with the YouTube app. And so all you'll need to do is to enter the YouTube app. What you're then going to do is to click the camera, and you'll notice that you have a button there that says Go Live. And of course, you have a button there that allows you to go live. And this is going to broadcast whatever you're going to be showing on your screen. If you want to have the camera front facing, you can do that or you can have it rear facing. All you'll need to do then is click the button that says go live and you will be live then on your channel. And once we've written in our title, we can then click done and we can then click next. And then we'll then be going live on our channel as soon as we hit the blue button. You can rotate your stream to go in landscape or you can choose to stream in portrait. Once you do that, you'll then be going live. When the broadcast is over, you can then hit the X button. And then you can click the end button. And your live video will then be complete on your mobile device. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, 
we have walked through all of the basics for streaming live on YouTube. We've looked at creating live streams from the event page, and we've looked at the various ways to make your video available, public, unlisted, and private. We looked at the setup for Google Hangouts so that you would be able to share your screen. And we looked at one of the easiest ways of going live, which is direct from your desktop. And we also walked through the process of going live using your mobile device. Now given this, you should now have no problem going to your YouTube profile, going inside your Creator Studio, and determining a way that you want to do live streaming. Knowing that you can do live streaming either as an event or direct with your webcam. And all of this means that you can create all kinds of content, including using slide presentations. So we showed you how to use Google Slides in order to have a different kind of interaction with your audience during your live stream. And finally, we looked at the paid application Restream.io which allows you to stream to YouTube Live and Facebook Live simultaneously. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course. Hello and welcome. You've demonstrated an interest in learning how YouTube Live works. The question is, if you have a live broadcast, how do you get people to see it? Now, you may already recognize that having someone watch your live stream while also seeing all of the other videos that are going to be available suits the platform well, but may or may not suit your business or organization well. So it's necessary to look at a number of tools that you have at your disposal within YouTube, as well as outside of YouTube to get the word out about your live stream. And so in this course, we will go inside of your creator studio and we will look at some of those tools that you have available to you so that you will be able to make the most of them and get the maximum number of people watching your live stream. So we'll look at your channel customization tools. We'll also show you how to provide an easy to use subscribe link. We'll also take a look at some of the success factors in making your live stream visible and attractive for others to click on. And we'll take a look at some of the enhancement tools that you can do with your video that will help you to make it more usable and widespread. So with that, thanks and I'll see you in the first video. Welcome back. Now, when you are inside of your live stream, there is one link that you can use in order to share to other places. And that's at the bottom of your right hand corner. So for example, if you look to the right hand corner and you click this hyperlink, you can take that link and you can post that to other places. Now, the other link you can share is going to be available to you when you have this setting enabled inside of your live stream. And that is to promote on my channel page when the event is live. That means then that if you're sharing your channel page, the individual will be able to watch your live stream on this page. Now the link that you're going to share that will be permanent will be your channel link and the word live after it. So for example, in this case, you'll see the channel name and then you'll see the word live after it and this is where your visitors will be able to come whenever you have a live stream. And that live stream will be playing here on your front page. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, another thing that you can do when you are doing a live event is you can, you can embed the link on one of your web pages. So, for example, if we were to take another live event and we were to create one from YouTube Live here and we were to start the live event, our Hangout would start and we would be broadcasting live on YouTube Live. We can go inside of our page by clicking this edit button and we can then click view on watch page. And you'll notice then that our stream is live here. And what we would do then is we would then go to the share button. We would then click the embed button. We can then take care of the embed options, grab the code, and then head to our website. And of course, we're just using WordPress as an example. You can use the site builder that you find most helpful. We're going to put in our code after a center code. Once we have it, we're then going to click publish. And then we'll view our post here. 
Now you need to give the individual's instruction to click this button. But as soon as they did, they would then be watching our stream live as it happened. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, when you are doing your live broadcast, you're going to be able to come to this area where your link is. You're going to be able to grab that link. Now, this link will embed the stream inside of your social media accounts. And you'll want to do this in a certain way for Facebook in particular. Now, now assuming that you have a group or a page, one way to do this would be to create a Facebook event. And we're just going to click the Create button. We're then going to find that event inside of our page. You'll notice then that there is a comment area. So what you can do is you can take your link and you're going to post it as a comment. And you're going to click OK. And what you're going to see is that you then have a preview. You want to instruct people to click the preview and they'll then be able to watch your live stream. Now it won't be enabled for sound by default, they'll need to enable the sound, so you may want to give them instruction to do that. They will also be able to embed the stream on LinkedIn in the very same way, but this will be in their status. Now by posting to Twitter, all you'll have is your direct link. So they'll be clicking this link, but they'll actually be taking the path back to YouTube Live. So this will not be an embedded stream. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, another thing you can do is you can post an excerpt of your live stream once the recording has been completed to your social media sites. Now, obviously, the social media sites favor those videos that are native to their platform and those that you upload directly. So what you're going to do is you're going to go inside of your Creator Studio once you get inside of your Creator Studio, you're then going to look for the video that you want to post an excerpt of. You'll then need to go inside of your Video Manager. Once you get to your Video Manager, what you're going to do is you're going to go to this drop-down arrow. You're then going to click Download MP4. So in the case of Facebook, you'll just click the Add Photo or Video button. You'll select the video. You'll write in your commentary and then you'll click Post. In the case of LinkedIn, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your post area. You're then going to click Share Videos. You'll then grab your video, and then you'll click Upload. You'll write in your commentary, and then you'll click Post. In terms of Twitter, what you're going to do is click the Tweet button. You'll then click this button where you have this bio chosen. You'll grab your video. You'll click open with free conference call with now Twitter is going to allow you to create an excerpt regardless so it's only going to allow you a certain amount of time for your video to play so you'll select your excerpt you'll then click done and then your post will update with your video now obviously if the goal is going to be for people to watch your live stream you don't want to put the entire recording of your content on the social media sites, what you're going to do is you're going to pull it into your video editing software. In this case, we're using an older version of Camtasia. We're then going to pull this down to the timeline. We're going to select an excerpt. We're going to cut off most of it. And then we're going to put our call to action at the beginning and the end in terms of some kind of slide or overlay. And basically, what you'll do with this edited video is you will remake the video with your call to action. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, you do have promotional tools available to you through your channel. And so to access them, what you're going to do is when you're logged into your YouTube account, you're going to go to this left side menu. You're going to click this link that says My Channel. When you get to that area, you're going to notice a couple of things. The first thing you're going to notice is that you're going to have some artwork that you can alter. So what you're going to do is go to the right side and you're going to see this pencil 
and you're going to click on it. You're going to click this link that says edit channel art. Now basically then you have a recommended channel art size. So this is something that if you want to have created on Fiverr or some other site, you can do that, or if you already know how to create your own graphics, you can have one created, but you definitely do want to have it at this size. Now, for the sake of this video, we're just going to select a random photo. Once you have your image in, YouTube will show you what it looked like generally on anyone's desktop, on their television, or on their mobile device. You can click this link that says adjust the crop so that you'll be able to see how you can structure the view. You'll then have an image on your channel. Now one thing you can do is you can have your image created with a call to action on the actual image. Now another thing you can do is you can change your profile. So what we can do here is we can click this pencil and YouTube is reminding us that when we change this image it's going to be connected to our entire brand. So what we're going to do is we're going to click edit and we're going to find the photo that we want to use. Once we have our photo, we'll then click Done. We can then return to our channel. You will see then that your profile has then updated. So you've now done the graphical element of customizing your channel. In the next video, we'll look at the other customization elements for your channel. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now once you've taken care of the graphical elements in your channel, what you can do is you can click this button that says Customize Channel. When you click that button, it's going to take you to another view of your channel. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this gear. And you want to make sure that all of these settings are the way that you want them if you want to keep the default settings. Once you've done that, you'll then click Save. Now the other thing you can do is you can then click the About area. When you click the About area, you're going to be able to add in some detail. For example, you're going to be able to customize your description. And again, you want to be aware that this description is going to also appear on YouTube for your channel. Once you've completed your description, you can then click Done. You can also write in a specific email where you want inquiries to go about your content. And so you can add that email here in this area. If you want to add in a support email, you can do that. Once you have your email address in, you can then click Done. You can also add links to your channel. And these can be promotional links. You can click this arrow. And you can add in custom links that will appear as icons on your channel. So for example, we can click in and put in a URL. Okay, what you'll note is that you can overlay on top of your custom art on your channel, so that means that they'll be clickable on top of the channel that your people will be seeing. And so once you have all of your sites in, you're then going to click Done. And then your content will then be available. And you'll also notice your icons here on top of your channel. You can also arrange your content on your channel for example, what you can do is you can feature a certain video. You can add a heading and then click Save. You can also decide on which videos are going to appear. You can either have your latest activity or your latest upload. Once you've completed what you want your channel front to look like, you can then click Done. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you are creating your channel primarily to do your live streams, one thing that you can do is you can do a channel trailer and that will introduce people to what you're going to be talking about, will introduce people to the content that they're going to see both live and recorded if they subscribe. And the way you get to the channel trailer is going to be when you come to the front page of your channel, you're going to notice two sides. YouTube is going to show you what people are going to see if they are a returning subscriber. They're also going to show you what people are going to see if they are new visitors to your channel page. And you're going to click that link. When you get there, what you're going to notice is that there's a button here for a channel trailer. And basically, 
this is going to be a video. Now it doesn't have to be a live video. It's going to be a video that you're going to record and you're going to tell people what they are about to see on your channel. And once you have that content ready, all you'll need to do is to come to this button. You'll click and then you'll be asked to grab a video that is already on your channel. That means then when you upload the video, you're going to need to decide whether or not the video is going to be unlisted. You're going to need to decide whether or not the video is going to be public. That means then that when you upload the video, you need to decide if it's going to be a public video or if it's going to be unlisted and you only want it to be seen on your channel trailer. And once you have your video in place, your channel trailer is then ready. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one of the ways that you get more people to view your content is to get them to subscribe to your channel. And of course, they can come to any of your videos and subscribe to your channel, or they can come to your channel page and then they can find the subscribe button. We can also give people a persistent link to your subscribe area so that they can subscribe. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your channel button and get your channel address. Once we have our channel link, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make it look like the link that's at the bottom here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this information and we're going to copy it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it at the end of the backslash on our channel. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire URL, we're going to copy it, and then we're going to distribute this to those whom we want to subscribe. And so once they get this URL, they put it into their browser. And then when they click the link, what's going to happen is they're going to be brought to this page and then they're going to be asked to confirm their channel subscription. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create. And they'll then be able to confirm. And that is then how you would create your channel link to distribute it to other individuals to subscribe to your channel. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one of the things that you'll want to do is you want to make sure that your live stream recording is distributed widely. And so to do that, you may need to make sure that all of the information in it is going to be appropriate. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your creator studio. Once you get inside your creator studio, what you're going to do is you're going to find the live stream that you did and you're then going to click the edit button. Once you click that edit button, you're going to notice an element at the top that says enhancements. And there are two things you're going to be able to do here. You're going to be able to blur faces and you're going to be able to start that process by clicking the edit button. Now this is a process that YouTube is going to go through and it's going to take some processing time for it to complete. So that entire process for that video took about eight minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to close out the timer and then we're going to select the faces of the individuals that we want to have blurred. We can decide to just select them all and then this will blur their faces throughout the entire video. We can deselect them all and then choose only those that we want to be blurred. We can also choose specific areas of our video to be blurred. So we click this edit button. What's going to happen now is we're going to then select where we want the blurring to occur. In this case, we can select the objects that we want to have blurred. And when we find one, we can just drag out our bar and then click done. We do that. Once it's been applied, we can save this and we can have this video saved in place or we can save it entirely as a new video. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in the next video. Now in the same way that you used a thumbnail when you were promoting your live stream, you can promote the recording also with the same or a similar thumbnail. And all you'll need to do is to go into edit your video and then you'll see here at the bottom that there is an area that says custom thumbnail. What you'll do then is click this button and you will then upload your image. And once you do that, all you need to do is to click save changes. And then your thumbnail will be the front of your video when you go inside of the video manager. 
and you can see it here and you look at it on your channel and you'll see it here and you do want to make sure that you have your thumbnail available mainly because it makes your video stand out and it makes it more watchable okay so with that thanks and i will see you in another welcome back now something that you can do to promote your previous live streams is to provide an end screen that gives viewers clickable access to them on a video that they are watching. So in order to do that, you're going to go up to your creator studio and you're going to open up the edit screen in one of your videos. Once you get there, you're then going to click in screen and annotations. Now YouTube is going to come to the very end of your video where you can place in your in screen or samples of your other videos or live streams. So for example, on the end screen, what we can do is click add element. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a video or a playlist. And we can do any number of things. We can either choose the videos, we can choose the most recent upload, or we can make the best choice for the viewer. And in this case, it's YouTube making that selection. So in most cases, we're just going to choose the video or a playlist. In this case, we're going to choose the video, and this is how it's going to appear at the end of your video. We can move this video so that it appears in another part of the video, just in case this would block something that they're going to see at the end. What we can also do is we can use other templates. So for example, what we can do is we can click Use Template. In this case, what we can say is we want to have two videos on our end screen. So when we do that, we're then going to click select. And then this is going to replace the current end screen with the selected template. That means then that now what we need to do is we need to choose two different videos that are going to be part of the end screen. So we click inside, get one of the videos we want. Now when we do that, then YouTube is going to select the other video. You can go back to your template and you can actually create other views including for videos now in this particular case we're going to replace our current screen we're then going to choose our videos Once we do that, then YouTube will choose the other three that are going to be part of your end screen. So basically, now we've given clickable access to our other content as the individual is watching our recording. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now we can also use cards in much the same way as we're using end screens to promote our other content. So if we click this link that says cards, that'll take us to another similar screen. And what's going to happen is we're going to need to pick some places inside of our video where we're going to give the viewers a brief glimpse of a link they can click to watch some of our other content. So for example, we can decide that at the 11 minute point, we're going to add a card. We're going to make that card one of our videos and then we're going to click on the video. What we're going to do then is we're going to write in a custom message. So in this case, we might write in, and then we're going to click Create Card. Now what's gonna happen is when this point comes in the video, your viewers are going to see this information piece, and all they'll need to do is they click on it, they're then going to be able to click on this card and then click this link to see what you have given them to click on you can add in some other cards. For example, maybe further into the video, what you're going to do is you're going to click add another card and it's going to be another video. And then you're going to click the video. You're going to write in a custom message and then you're gonna click create card. And then at this point in the video, your viewers are going to see this area. They click on it. They're then going to have this information where they can click and go to another video. So cards obviously have more to them than all of those things. However, if you're trying to get people to see more of your content, 
then you'll definitely want to use cards and then exercise the capacity you have to drive people to some of your other content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, you want to increase the number of people that can watch your recordings. You can do that by placing subtitles on your video. Now, inside of your editing screen, you're going to notice that if you click this link, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to add a transcript of some kind. Once you choose the language, you basically have three ways of being able to create a transcript. You can upload a file, you can transcribe it and auto sync it, or in other words, you can listen to the video and then you can type out your transcript or you can type out your subtitles in this area. Now, in most cases, you're going to use your auto transcribe. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to your video manager and the video manager will show you all of your videos. You're going to choose the one that you are working with. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to choose one of the videos that we know has voice and we're going to click this drop down arrow. And what you're going to notice here is that there is a link here that says subtitles forward slash closed caption. We're going to click that link. What's going to happen is, is that now the subtitles and captions will be added. We're going to choose the language and we're going to set the language. And what you'll notice is that the subtitles and closed caption has already been published and added to our video. And basically now when the person watches our video, they're going to see a transcript going across the end of the screen. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one of the other things you can do to increase the number of people that will see your recordings is you can place your content into playlists. And so to do that, you're going to go from your video manager, from the videos link, to this link that says playlists. And when you get there, what you're going to do is you're going to create a new playlist. You're going to give your playlist a title. You can decide on whether or not the playlist is going to be public, whether or not it's going to be unlisted, or whether or not it's going to be private and only you can see it. Now, if you want the maximum reach, you'll want to leave it public. So what you're going to do is you're then going to click Create. You're then going to be brought to this page. And you can do a couple of things with this playlist. First, what you can do is you can click in this pencil. Then you can add in a description. Once you've done that, if you click outside, then your changes will be saved. You can then click playlist settings. Once again, you can decide whether or not the playlist is going to be public. You can determine that you are going to direct how the videos are ordered in your playlist, or you can use an automatic system. You can decide whether or not your playlist can be embedded so other people can take that playlist and put it on their website or some other web property. And you can determine whether or not this playlist is going to be an official series, meaning that the videos that you place inside of this playlist will only be in this playlist and that's the only way that they'll be able to be experienced as a group. Now you can determine that some videos will be auto added to your playlist. So for example, if your title has a certain word in it, you can say that this will be part of your playlist. And there are other rules that you can do. Your subscription has a certain word or there's a certain tag. And basically what you'll be doing is you'll be naming these things so that you know that they will automatically put like content into the designated playlist. You can also allow others to add to your playlist. So for example, if we turn this on, we can then allow others by giving them the link to this playlist in order to become a contributor. Once we have all those things, we can then click save. We can then add videos to the playlist. And there's one more thing with respect to playlists that you'll want to be aware of. And you're going to need to go to the front of your channel in order to see it. Now, if you come down in to the video. beginning of your channel, what you're gonna see is that we can add in our playlist. So we're going to do is we're going to click customize channel and then what we're going to do is we're going to add a section. And what we can do is we can determine what that section is going to be. We're going to determine that we're going to add in a single playlist. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay it out in a horizontal row. 
we're then going to choose a particular playlist. And once we have that playlist selected, we can then click Done. Then, when people come to our front page, they'll then be able to see that playlist on our front page. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, inside of your Info and Settings area, you do have a link that says Advanced Settings, and we're going to click on that right now. And some may increase our viewership, and there are some things that you may want to test. For example, if you did have a chat during your live sessions, one of the things you can do is you can allow others to see that chat if you think that would keep them interested in your video. Now you can make a decision about allowing other people to embed the video or not embed the video because, again, what you want people to do is you want people to come back and see your other videos. So again, this is something that you'll want to determine on a video by video basis. And in some cases, you may or may not want to make your video statistics available. Again, in some cases, knowing what these statistics are and being able to access them on the watch page will, in some cases, make some people want to watch and others not. So again, another thing that you'll want to monitor and decide and test. And of course, you will want to determine whether or not you want to allow comments by your video or not. Now, in some cases, this might bring an element to the video that you don't want. Or in other cases, giving people the opportunity to comment on what your content is will invite more activity around the video and then make it more searchable. So again, all of these are things you're going to want to determine by a video by video basis and test to see how they fit with your particular business model. You don't want to just leave the default settings as they are. You want to think about how they're going to impact what it is you're trying to do. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, obviously some of the things you're going to do to encourage people to watch your live stream and your recordings is going to be a little more manual. And to find those ways, what you're going to do is go inside of the community link on your channel and you can then click inside of your subscriber link. And what you're going to find are all of the people that have subscribed to your channel who do not have privacy settings indicating that their subscriptions can't be known. You can sort those subscriptions here in this link so you can look at those that are most popular. And these are individuals that you can choose to contact or you can choose to subscribe to their channel. Of course, in order to contact them, all you would need to do is to click on their channel. And obviously what you're trying to do is you're trying to influence those. Obviously what you're trying to do is to find those that have influence. And of course, you can initiate a collaboration or something more suitable for both you and that party. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, depending on what your live stream is and what you're trying to do, another part of the post-production process may be to add music. And you can do that inside of your video editing screen and going to this link that says audio. And when you do that, what you're going to notice is that you can add or replace audio inside of your video. Now you're not going to be able to add anything from your personal computer to your existing video, but you will be able to add music that is already available on YouTube as either background music or to replace certain audio. So for example, one of the things we can do is we can choose some kind of audio. And if you want to search for a particular genre of music, you can do that by writing this genre in this area and then you'll get all of the tracks that are going to be related to it. And you can listen to the track by clicking any of the links. You can determine which ones you actually want. You can also sort by the genre that you want. You can do that here. And then once you find the background music that you'd like to place inside of your video, you can then place that video here. Now, one of the things that you can do, you get to the end of your video and you have your end card showing, those are good times to actually add in the music. So what we would do here is we would then click add to video of the track that we want to add. We would then pull it to the point in the video where we want it to begin and end. And then we would determine how we want the video to sound. So for example, if we want to favor the music, we would then keep the cursor at this end 
if we want it to be background music and we would want our voice to play, then we would move the cursor more to this end. And then once we finalize our changes, we would then click Save Changes. You'll then see the edit of your video is in progress. And when it is complete, then your video will be ready with new audio. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you go inside of your Creator Studio, and you go into the channel link, and you click on the status and features, one of the things you're going to want to do is scroll down here to the bottom. And you're going to notice that there is a way for you to be able to get a custom URL. Now, currently, this channel that we're using for it, for the sake of this tutorial course, is ineligible for a custom URL. However, it is a good idea to know what the requirements are. So we're going to click this link where it says here. And what you're going to notice is that this is going to give you the ability to give you a name that you can give to your YouTube URL instead of the long, ugly one that we were working with earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and then we're going to click General Eligibility Requirements. You're going to notice that your channel needs to have at least 100 or more subscribers. It needs to be at least 30 days old. And it needs to have an uploaded photo as a channel icon and uploaded channel art. Now, more than likely, you have the last two already done. The only thing that you may be lacking are the 100 subscribers. So that is going to be the thing that you're going to need to work on in order to have a more attractive URL and even more than it being attractive for it to be memorable. Until that time, you'll need to use the channel ID that you have as well as the user ID. Okay, so with that, thanks and I'll see you in another video. In conclusion, now before you get into strategic tools such as social media, and search engine optimization, it's a good idea to understand the tools that YouTube has given you to make sure that your video is widely distributed. And in this course, that is what we have focused on. You now know how to use your direct shareable link and to make it available in those places where people might see and join your live stream. You now know how to download your video in MP4 format and upload it to other locations. And we've reviewed all of the channel promotional tools, whether or not you're talking about your channel art, your links, or even your channel trailer. We also discussed how you can create your playlist and make them available on your channel homepage. And we've discussed the video post-production process. Everything from blurring information to thumbnails, in-screen, cards, subtitles, playlists, and your advanced settings. We also discuss adding audio to your video as well as working with your subscribers. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.